Hi. Now, for this last part, part C, we've got to calculate the range of h of x, and we're given the graph here of h of x. So, if you'd like to uh, try this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. Do come back when ready, and you can check your work solution with mine. Okay, welcome back. So, uh, let's see how we do this. Well, first of all, the range of h of x, we're told that it goes from h is greater than or equal to 0. So we can see that's the bottom part of this. But what it's going to do is go from here, essentially, all the way up to this y value at this point here. This is going to be, essentially, our range. So what we've got to do is establish what this y value here is going to be that corresponds with this peak. So in order to do that, we know that at this point here, the first differential of h of x, which gives the gradient at any point on the curve, has to be equal to 0. So there we go. That's how we do this. So we found out in the earlier part that h dash x equaled 2 multiplied by 5 minus x squared all over x squared plus 5 all squared. And so at this point we just essentially are looking for the value of x first of all when h dash x equals 0. And when h dash x equals 0, we've got our fraction 2 multiplied by 5 minus x squared over x squared plus 5, all squared, has to equal 0. And if we multiply both sides by our denominator here, we're going to end up with the numerator equaling 0. 2 multiplied by 5 minus x squared then equaling 0. So at this point, okay, it can't be 2 that's equal to 0. It must be just the factor 5 minus x squared that equals 0. So therefore, we've got 5 minus x squared equals 0. If we add x squared to both sides, we end up with x squared equaling 5. And next, we take the square root to both sides. So we'd have x equals what would normally be plus or minus the square root of 5. But in this example, we're told that x is greater than or equal to 0. So we don't need the minus root 5. So now that I've got x equals root 5, that would be the value for x at this point. I just need to substitute it into h of x to get this value up here. Well, I certainly don't want to put root 5 into this version of h of x. We'll go into this version here. So we can say that, therefore, h of root 5 equals, and we've got 2 times root 5, all divided by root 5 squared, root 5 all squared, and then plus the additional 5 here. Now if we work this out, what we've got here is 2 root 5 on the top, and on the bottom here we've got 5 plus another 5 then, which is 10. And I can see that this cancels down. 2 will go into 2 once and will go into 10 5 times. So we end up with root 5 over 5. And so we've got a calculate the range of h of x, so we can say that therefore the range of h of x is going to be h of x is going to go from being greater than or equal to 0 at the bottom here, all the way up to this top value, which is less than or equal to root 5 over 5. Root 5 over 5. All right.